Yes, hello once again and welcome to another episode of THB Tutorials. In today's video, we'll be looking at management accounting. We'll be talking about marginal costing, marginal costing and absorption costing. Right, so this is the this is the outline for the video. We want to have an introduction, speak you know speak about what we are trying to do, you know, with marginal costing and absorption costing. We also talk about each of them individually. We talk about absorption costing, we talk about marginal costing, we also look at a concept known as the over or under absorption of overheads. And we will also look at how to prepare our income statement using the two approaches AC and MC. AC is absorption costing, MC is marginal costing, right? And lastly, we look at the reconciliation of marginal and absorption costing profits, right? So let me just tell you what this whole slide is about right now. We have our introduction, we have our absorption costing, right? So absorption costing, marginal costing. The whole purpose or intention behind marginal and absorption costing is to prepare our income statement, right? And we use the two approaches. You use marginal costing to prepare income statements. Also you use absorption costing to prepare income statement, right? Now when you do that, you get different profits due to the differences in the method, right? So the profits for marginal costing will not be the same as the profit for absorption costing, right? So we have to reconcile the profits and find out what is causing the difference in the profits. Yes, so that's it. Let's begin. Yeah, so our introduction. Accumulation of cost and presentation procedures are accomplished using one of two methods. So we can use absorption costing to get the total cost of an item. We can also use marginal or variable cost, right? Marginal or variable cost. So these are the two methods that can be used to accumulate cost and you know present them. And the, the, the presentation procedures are accomplished using the, the presentation procedure is you know the income statement that you're talking about now each method uses the same basic method but they structured and process the data differently and that's why the profits are different so let's talk about absorption costing first absorption costing is a method of sharing overheads between products on a fair basis right so what we did in week three, the allocation of overheads to the production cost centers, that's actually a step in absorption costing, right? And I, I, I explained that in that view, it's a step in absorption costing, right? But we're not, be, we're not be talking about allocation of overheads over here. That's at that side, so we won't be talking about that. But in this, we'll be focusing more on the total cost per unit side, how to use absorption costing to find the total cost per unit of a product, right? Now the objective of absorption costing is to include the total cost of a product, an appropriate share of the organization's total overhead, right? We understand that even though maybe you have a battery on a company, the aim of the company is to make money through selling batteries, right? Or through manufacturing batteries to sell to your sup so, uh, so suppliers, whatever. You are selling batteries. That's what I mean. Selling batteries is what the business should revolve around. But there are other cost centers, especially non production cost centers, like marketing, you're selling this and that, right? And these are all in can cost. But you have to find a way to include a portion of those costs into the cost of your products, right? That's what the total cost. The unit is trying to is talking about right so you you can make your budget well and not in care loss right now absorption costing changes the cost of all manufacturing components that's direct materials direct labor variable overheads and fixed overheads as product cost 
right under absorption costing because incurred in a non-manufacturing areas of the organization are considered period cost are considered period cost and are expensed in a, in a manner that properly matches them with revenues right that's that under absorption costing cost incurred in the non-manufacturing areas that's a non-production areas right human resources um accounting marketing research and development these are non-manufacturing areas right so we consider this cost what period cost and i'll explain that when we get to the income statement why they are considered period cost and the way they are included in the calculations right or do their expense well moving on now this is a key point the production cost per unit of an item and the operation costing consists of the following right so let's say you have a battery one battery and it says that the their cost the total cost per that battery and the operation costing is 50 Ghana cities so in that 50 Ghana cities you will see a quota or a percentage for direct material direct labor viable production overheads and fixed production overheads right so these are the four things that go into the total cost per unit of a product and the absorption costing moving on there are three major stages in absorption costing right they are allocation apportionment and absorption allocation and apportionment is so we focus more of on in the with the, the allocation of overheads to the production cost centers focus more of, on of course more on that those videos are about that so in this video we will we'll be looking more at the absorption part right well not just the absorption part but our emphasis in this lecture is the determination of profits using absorption costing and marginal costing and we're concerning the two profits right so determining the profit that so that's going to prepare the income statement one and then we're concerning the profits because as i said stated earlier marginal costing procedure will give you a different net profit and our option costing to give you a different net profit so we have to reconcile the profit right and explain the differences that, that's what i'm focusing on right how to prepare the income statement using the two and how to reconcile their different profits. Now, over and under absorption of overheads, and this is a very important you know, aspect of what I'm doing here. If I want to prepare the income statement, especially using absorption costing, and this is something that you must understand. Over and under absorption of overheads occurs because the predetermined overhead absorption rates are based on estimates, right? Over absorption means that the overheads charged to the cost of sales are greater than the overheads actually incurred. Under absorption means that insufficient overheads have been included in the cost of sales. Right? It is inevitable that at the end of the accounting year there will be an over or under absorption of the overhead actually incurred. Very well, right? So in your typical company there's always a budget for the period that's coming right now those budgets let's say you have a budget for overhead cost or fees overhead cost you have a budget for that you also have a budget for the production unit that i want to incur now the overhead absorption rate discussing with three was given by what the total cost of the overhead over the activity level but in this situation you say that the, the budgeted overhead cost over the budgeted activity level right and that gives you a budgeted OAR. So that that's the OAR that you use to absorb your cost. Now when you do that, you can either overdo it or you can underdo it. And that's what I'm talking about right now. So let's see more about this now. The reasons for over and under absorption of overheads could be as a result of the following. One, the actual overheads, the actual overhead cost are different from the budgeted overheads right so either the overhead cost the budgeted and actual are different or the problem could be with the activity levels the activity levels could either be different from from 
the budgeted activity level and the actual activity level could also differ. That could be a cost for the over or under assumption. Now the actual overheads cost and actual level. So now either one differs or both of them differ. So you can also have a situation where the budgeted overhead cost and the budgeted activity level differ from the actual overhead cost and the actual activity level. All right. So here is a sample question, right? We have over or under absorption of overhead. Now, PBC Company Limited has a budgeted production overhead of 50,000 Ghana cities and a budgeted activity level of 25,000 directly by right? Now, calculate the under or over absorption overhead and the reason for the under or over absorption in the following circumstances. Well, well. So let me just get a little practical. When you see a question like this, the first thing that you should do is to calculate the budgeted OER, right? Then there will be OER. And as I said, that's going to be the budgeted overhead cost, or the budgeted production overhead. Over all over what the budgeted activity level. Right. Now in this question, what was our budgeted activity level? Our budgeted activity level was so budgeted over a lot of rates. The B stands for budgeted. The light is going back. Let's. Yeah, I think it's okay. All right, so budgeted activity level. Budgeted, budgeted production overhead over the budgeted activity level, right? Now, in this question, our budgeted activity level was 25,000. Right? 25,000. And our budgeted production overhead was 50,000. 25 divided by 50 is 2. So that means that our budgeted OAR becomes 2 Ghana cities per unit. All right. So now we have ascertained our budgeted overhead. What comes next? So this is the first step. The first step is always to determine your budgeted overhead, right? So we have done that is two. Now looking at the question, the question says that actual overhead cost was forty seven thousand Ghana and fifty five thousand direct labor hours. Wait, right. And the question is asking us to calculate the under or over absorption of the overhead. And you give the reason why there was an under or over absorption. Now, in determining the under or over absorption, it gets tricky most of the times. And one way used to distinguish it that I was taught is when the budgeted overhead is greater than the actual overhead or in the budgeted act act activity level is greater than the actual activity level we call that under, absor under absorption so you see it's like, it's like the opposite when the budgeted is greater there's an absorption right and when the actual is greater than the budgeted that's when we call it over absorption so that, I know it's very confusing, but that's how you know how it was explained to me, and that's what worked, or that's what works in the exams. So keep that in mind. Now, yeah. So our budgeted OER was forty-seven thousand. So that has to be per unit, right? So for the first now we have an 
we incurred actual overheads of 47,000 Ghana cities. Right? And our activity level was 25,000. Right? So, in this situation, what, what do we say? The first thing that we do now is we take the activity level of the 25,000 units and we multiply that by the overhead aggression rate. So that becomes 25,000 by 2. It gives us 50,000. Right? So what we realize that the actual overhead cost incurred was greater than the um, than the absorbed than the than the actual right so what do you say the but if the budget is better than the actual result under our option so just take it like that okay or if you are, are uncomfortable then don't worry but that's how i understand it yeah now b so your yes so the difference is what you use at uh, three thousand so that three thousand becomes an absorption right there was an under absorption of three thousand very well so moving on, the next one was what? 50,000 cities. So the, this is like the actual over there is the same as the body tech, right? And then the, the direct about is what is different now. So you guys, it's about 21,500 as the actual, right? And then the body tech was 25,000. I follow me now another way to do this you know very straightforward way and it's actually more accurate and it's less confusing than the second one i just talked spoke about you go there all right the first one is the body tech right and then this one is the activity level which one is greater? The budgeted is obviously greater than the actual. Right? Now, for you to straightforward find your answer, just subtract this from this. That gives you what? 3,500. Right? So when that gives you the 3,500, let's multiply that difference by the activity level. Right. So times two becomes seven thousand. And remember, so that if the budget is greater than the actual, then we say it's what under absorption. And you say that if this is an under absorption of seven thousand, right? Now, if you are in that, then this. Use the same formula too. So before you calculate the budget over overhead, right? So then said is to multiply the two by the activity level, which was so to become two times twenty-one thousand five hundred. Right. Hmm. So plus two, so one 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 carry one. And calculator is not here. Zero 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 one one two three three four. Yeah. So that gives you 43,000, right? That gives you 43,000 Ghana cities. Now, 43,000 Ghana cities here, I've been some of the things that. That becomes the activity level of the 21,500 times 2. That gives you the But for the three thousand that I have seen, right now, five thousand fifty thousand minus fifty three thousand becomes what? 
7000. Eh, 7000. Now, so this is the second method, right? That makes your work a whole lot easier. Now, when you have the first one, then the A like this, the A, actual overhead, overhead cost as 47,000. But you realize that the activity level is different. See the activity level. It's different over here. Yeah, the activity level is 25,000. It's the same, sorry. So the difference is in the cost. You realize that when you solve the A, you got 3,000. 5,000 minus 27,000. It's what? 3,000. So you just made a comparison again. Which one is greater? The budgeted was greater than the actual. So the... It is an adoption. Right? So just we make the analysis. Yeah, so that's it for the over and under adoption. Right? So now I'm going to move on to the next part. Yeah, so now I'm moving on to marginal costing. Marginal costing is an alternative method to absorption costing. In marginal costing, only variable costs are charged as cost of sale, and the contribution is calculated by deducting the variable cost per unit from the sales revenue. See, and a contribution is calculated. Right, contribution. It's equal to the sales revenue. Sales revenue minus the variable cost per unit. That gives us what? Yes. Now, where do you go next? So, the closing stock of work in progress and finished goods are valued at marginal or viable production cost. Right? So, you remember that in the absorption costing, you said that the cost per unit of a product. It's going to have four things direct materials, direct labor, variable variety, and fixed variety. But this marginal cost nobody considers variable cost. So you remove fixed variety from it. So it's just going to be direct materials, direct labor, and what? Variable variety. Yeah. Now, closing stock of work in progress and finished goods are valued at marginal production cost. So we were that in the, in the, in the, when we are preparing the income statement, when we are preparing the income statement, we explain that, right? Now, to, this is just to say that when we are finding the value of the closing stock, you want to be the closing stock times the total cost per unit of marginal cost. Now, these costs are treated as period cost and are charged in full to the profit and loss account of the accounting period in which they are incurred. Right, so now, what I do is I take us back so we see something. It was under adoption cost. Nope. Yes, so we have that for absorption costing, it says that what? Absorption costing treats all costs of manufacturing components as well as cost before it covered now and now adoption costing cost in care in the non-manufacturing areas of the organization are considered period cost right the cost in care in the non-manufacturing areas of production are considered period cost so the period cost in adoption costing are what non-production cost right so that's for AC. But for marginal co costing, the costs that are considered pure costs are what? Those are fixed cost, right? So, but for marginal costing, it's what the fixed cost 
that is considered as a period cost. I get me. Uh huh. You know that that uh, only variable costs are charged as cost of sales. So only variable costs are charged as cost of sales. Yeah, so now we can move on. Right, yeah, the guy. Right. So in absorption costing is the non production cost that are considered as pure cost. And for the marginal costing is the fixed cost that is considered as a periodic cost. So those two things they don't go into cost of sales. So next, the marginal production cost per unit of a I have explained it right. That material, that labor and variable production over it. Now contribution is referred to as the difference between the sales value and the marginal or variable cost of a product. So that has also been done. That's what that, that is wrong. Right. Now Enter the secrets. Now, profit can also be given by so all right. So, this is. Face cost plus profit is giving is equal to contribution. I won't explain that in this video. That will come under cost volume profit analysis. But let's play around it a little. Now yes, income statement using marginal costing and absorption costing. Now in preparing an income statement using marginal or absorption costing, the following differences should be noted. Right. So we have marginal costing on one side, absorption costing on the other side. Marginal costing says that closing inventories are valued at marginal product production cost. Closing inventory are valued at marginal production cost or the variable production cost, right? But unlike the marginal costing for, for the absorption costing, it uses the full production cost, right? The full production cost. What the full production cost? The full production cost is what? Direct materials plus direct labor plus variable, variable production right plus fixed production right. Those four elements, right? But for the marginal costing, it takes out the fixed production overhead and just uses direct materials, labor, direct labor, and what? Variable production overhead. Exactly. What's next? Fixed costs are period costs for marginal costing. I've explained this. For absorption costing, fixed costs are absorbed into unit cost. That's why the fixed cost is represented in the total cost per unit of a product. Right now, lastly, marginal costing cost of sales does not include a share of fixed overhead. Cost of sales does not include a, a share of fixed overhead, right? So, you don't factor fixed overhead into the cost of sales, but you very you can bring variable overhead over there. Fixed overhead, no, 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 right? those are period costs for cost of sales, they include. For the absorption costing, they include a, a share of the cost of sales. Sorry. Absorption costing. For that one, the cost of sales includes a share of the fixed overheads. Don't worry, just note down these differences. Then we'll strike very soon. Now, these are the steps covered. The first, when you are preparing your income statement, you know, after you use your, when you are using your marginal costing and your absorption costing to prepare your income statement, that's how the question will come by the way. You do, do you'll be given, you know, relevant information, like the cost per unit, selling price per unit, etc., etc. Then you'll be asked, you'll be given some information, you'll be asked to calculate, to prepare the income statement using absorption costing or marginal costing, right? Now, when you do that, you 
in some instances you may also be asked to reconcile the profit i will talk about that soon but there is a practical video on how to solve questions like that so not solving any questions i'm just giving you the workaround in this video right and telling you how to go about it all the other information is in the practical video that's actually, that's actually a group video right so it was a live teaching and learning with you know actual students that's the first time we've ever done that right so watch that as well and let us know what you think about those things if, if you find it helpful if you think you should i will listen to you so just let, let us know now moving on right so i'm saying the steps so this, these are the steps involved when you, when you are giving that question the first thing you do is you calculate your overhead absorption rates per unit the second is to you calculate the total cost per unit the third is to calculate closing inventory in units for you calculate the under or over absorption of overhead when you're doing that use the second method that i taught you right you take the units subtract them the difference you multiply the difference by the overhead absorption rate when you get your answer right if the budgeted over if the budgeted is greater than the activity the actual then you say that that's what under absorption if the actual is greater than the budgeted say oh, that's over absorption yes it will work in essence so it will be best way to take it like that if you don't if you don't want to take, take it like that you know it's not my fault but this is my understanding i stand to be corrected but i'm sure right i trust my sources so if you trust me then let's let's work that part anyway so this is a question right i won't talk about this you let me just give a, a, a work around it right so virgin limited manufactures a single product with the following details selling price is 180 Dollar cities per unit diet material diet labor 40 16 variable by blah 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 right now you have annual fixed production rights are budgeted to be 1.6 million and the company expects to produce 1.28 million yeah 1.28 million units each year now overheads are absorbed on a per unit basis overheads are absorbed on a per unit basis the actual overheads incurred for the year amounted to 1.6 million so realize that in this instance the budgeted overhead over here will give me a second all right stop playing with me good now see let me use red that will stand out more this was the annual fixed production over here, right this and they are budgeted see the keyword wire budgeted another way they can use it will be what expected right expected budgeted anyway this is the budgeted overhead cost 1.6 million or this one right now look over here to the next point overheads are absorbed on a per unit basis then the actual over here the actual overheads in care uh right maybe this will be smoother for me very good right there. right aha uh -huh. so they are in care for the year so these are the, the actual overhead in care was what also 1.6 million forgive me forgive me yes anyway the budgeted fixed selling costs are 320,000 per quarter right always take note of first at this per quarter now actual units sold for the first quarter of 2019 was 240,000 units the actual production was what 280,000 units there were no opening inventory at the beginning of January now prepare the income statement for the first quarter using marginal and absorption cost so the first thing we take note over here is what for the first quarter how many quarters are there in a year four so you divide your year into four so if the production over here overheads for the year was 
I'm a citizen. Your 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 first thing is to determine your, your, your OAR, right? Your OAR, which gives you the budgeted overhead times. Sorry, the budgeted overhead over the budgeted activity level. That's the first thing. When you do that for this one, we have 1.25. You saw in the practical video, but I'm just going over it. So that's the first step. The second step is to determine your viable or marginal cost per unit. I want to find that's not that serious. So it's in the practical video. You're going to just check that one out. Then your third step will be to calculate your closing inventory. That was also very simple. So, so that check that out in the video. Now, let me talk about that. Under our over adoption. Realize that I was telling you that I use the second formula, the units. So see, this, um, uh huh, uh huh. See, see why? It's just that actual from this point, actual production was two hundred eighty thousand. The actual production or the actual activity level was two hundred eighty thousand, right? Actual activity level. Now the budgeted activity level was what? Activity level. We have the actual the actual the question is what? It's one hundred eighty thousand. Two hundred eighty thousand, and the budgeted activity level was what? So the budgeted activity level, the question was what? The the company expects to produce one one million two hundred eighty thousand, right? So that will be one one point two eight million divided by four, right? Because it's a quarter, then for the quarter of the year, so. That will be divided by four. When you compute that, that gives you 320,000 units. This man is this gives you what? 40,000. Right? That, that's the change in inventory level. So always use this formula. Don't use the other. It's, it, it, it gets confusing. Right? Now this difference of forty thousand units, right? You multiply that by the overhead absorption rate that you get in the question. As I said, I've already explained it, right? So let me focus more on preparing the income statement here. So that's basically what you need. Very well. So let me explain some a few So this is the calculation. Uh -huh. Now this is the income statement. Everything has been done now. So here I have Virgin Limited income statement for the first quarter of twenty nineteen. Marginal costing profit. Marginal costing, right? This is the one for marginal costing. So you get your sales, right? That's the units unit sold times the selling price per unit. That gives you this figure right Now you less cost of sales. When you less the cost of sales, so before you can less cost of sales, or before you can subtract cost of sales. You must first find the cost of sales. And the cost of sales is given by what? Opening stock plus production cost minus closing stock. So plus production. Let me I explain that by me. It's really important that you get this um aspect, right? Now this is what you are this is how you got what? So Cost of sales. You see, this is money money accounting. If it was financial, uh, if it was accounting itself, in financial reporting, you see things like carriage inwards, 
and all, all those other things. Yeah, those things factor into the cost of sales. But in this context, you have limited it to this formula, right? So cost of sales be equal to opening stock plus production cost minus closing stock. Right. Uh, so this is the formula opening stock plus production so that's what i've seen over there right but if you look in this question the the question you see that we weren't given anything like the variable cost of the year right you weren't given anything like variable cost of the year is giving us maybe four hundred thousand we didn't give you that is that giving something like that you will have added that to the result of the cost of sales. Let me see this. How about I solve the example over here? So do that right It's no good, it's no good. But anyway, if the question gives you a variable selling and the like variable selling and, and distribution cost variable, you would have added it to the to this figure. You have added it to this figure. This fifteen million eight hundred and forty thousand. You have added it to it before you come and subtract to get your contribution. Right. Remember so that our contribution is what? The sales revenue minus the variable cost. Or the variable this yeah, the variable cost. Right. Very well. Now you also remember that we said that fixed cost. Fixed cost are period cost. So that's that after the contribution, what what happens? It's only fixed production overhead. And fixed selling overhead. That you can see over here, right? Because anything fixed is considered as a period cost. So after they've calculated the cost per unit, cost of sales, and they have their contribution, before they factor in the fixed production cost, so they subtract it from the contribution. So you add the, the fixed production overhead to the fixed non production overhead. That gives you 720,000. And you subtract it from the, the, from the contribution. And that gives you your answer, right? Very well. In the same way, once again, okay, let's talk about this now. Yes, let me just. All right. So, Virgin Limited, right? Virgin Limited. Income statement for the first quarter of 2019, our costing. That was sales, 240,000 units times 180,000. Yes. And less cost of, so the same process. But you heard that the, the price per, the cost per unit for our costing costing, this one, is different from the one for marginal costing. Uh -huh. So, like that. So now, see, you get your figures and you get this. But this amount, see, so the absorption that you are talking about, the under absorption or the over absorption, it only really affects the management. Uh, you do use that one for the ab absorption costing procedure, it doesn't come into the marginal costing. So you add your under absorption of overhead over here. That gives you your cost of sales. So this 60 million is the cost of sales. Right? And that minus your sales revenue gives you gross profit. Right? So AC gives you gross profit, but MC gives you contribution. Right? 
then you come and add your fixed selling overhead now if you remember i said that in adoption costing non-manufacturing areas the cost incurred over there non-manufacturing is the same as non-production so fixed selling overhead is a non-production overhead right it, it has nothing to do with the production of the of, of the products that the company needs to sell so it's considered a pure it's considered a purely cost that's why it comes after the gross profits right the same way to so the ones coming after the contribution or the gross profit looks like the pure cost so when you have pure cost pure cost that's how you factor them into the income statement right it for much now costing all pure costs which are any and all fixed costs come after the contribution right so too for adoption costing all periodic costs come after you have calculated your gross profit right and your gross profit is given by your your sales minus your cost of sales right? that's what gives you gross profit very well now how do you reconcile the profits this has also been explained in the practical video so we won't talk much about it but see this if inventory levels increase between the opening and closing periods, adoption costing will report higher profits. This is because the production overhead incurred during the period would be carried forward in closing inventory, which, which, which reduces cost of sales to be set off against sales revenue in the following period instead of being written off in full against profits in the period concerned. Right? So these are just explanations for all this. All this was looking about in there. Right. So the essential aspect that you need to get to the point in your examination has been provided in a particular video. So don't worry much about it. About that. Yeah, so covered. So covered. Right, so now this is a trial question. So I would like to speak more about this right so as usual you follow your steps you get your you get your main profit you calculate your OAR for this question what's next total cost per unit you calculate that right but for the like they give you fixed cost over here right so the fixed cost is your overhead absorption rate so don't go and calculate overhead absorption rate again right so so the, the OAR is always your fixed cost per unit. So when you, when you are getting fixed cost per unit, you don't need to calculate the OAR again. So that's one one aspect one aspect of it, right? Now, so your this standard cost per unit is for absorption cost. So absorption cost will be the same as sixty nine gonna see this per unit. For marginal costing, it will be different. So marginal costing, you just subtract the fixed cost per unit. So you just subtract the 20 to get a marginal cost. It will be 69 minus 20. That will give you a marginal cost. Then that will be 49. So after finding your total cost, you move on to completing your closing inventory. That's also simple. I said like these questions are I've given you two periods, right? And so that there are no finish this i'm reading this point there are no finish units in there are no units in finished goods inventory at first general so for this first period there is no opening inventory moving on to the next period there will be what so when you calculate this one when you calculate the closing inventory for the first period you will get a closing inventory so that closing inventory becomes the opening inventory of the new period right we're going to opening inventory of the new period very well so for the second period you have opening inventory so factor that into your calculation yeah now how do you calculate for the under or over absorption when i'm doing that this one is see you see see, see, see the other way See the figures over here, this production sales. See the figures over here. Almost. Now, 
the sales over here see the keyword over here budgets right production and sales budgets so these are the budgeted mm. normal output is sixteen thousand. use that one as the actual so you divide that by two but there are two periods so per period it will be eight thousand I see that the 16,000 is per year, per annum. So take for the two periods, you just divide it by two. So actual for this one will be 8,000. For this one will be 8,000. 8, 8, so just use the method that I taught you. It will be your the budgeted minus the actual. Just subtract it. You get your figure. Then compare which one is small, which one is less. If it's small, is if the budgeted is small and the actual is another option. If the actual is small and the budgeted is what? Over absorption and you just factor that into your calculation, right? Now, I said this in the particular video, so my information is in the description, right? So, you just hit me up if you have, you know, maybe you try to solve it and you still couldn't get it. I will help you out you know, personally, right? You also have a team, so. You have no you have no worries now see we have um yes so for the income statement how do you do it so you realize over here that there are keywords like here we go. Aha. see so we have Variable, this, this, this was uh, sorry, variable selling, distribution, administration cost. Uh, twenty percent of the sales value. So just find a sales value, multiply by twenty percent, and you get a variable selling, distribution, and administration cost. When you get that figure, that one you use it for what? the marginal cost. Let me double check. Okay, it comes in both, but for variable selling distribution, after you've calculated your cost of sales, yes, over here. So for for the variable selling, this after you get your cost of sales, this value over here, you come and add variable selling and distribution cost to the cost of goods sold, which is this fifty million right before that will give you the contribution when you subtract it from the sales i get it uh-huh so that's how you treat it for the marginal cost right but when you come to the absorption costing that calculation will be added to your fixed cost Right, you add the variable distance to your fixed cost because see that's variable selling and distribution, so it's also a non production cost, right? So, a non production cost, so just add it after the gross profits. So, you add it to you add all your costs together. So, you have your your variable selling and distribution cost, that's how your fixed cost you add it together and then you subtract from the gross profit. Now one more thing too is that okay before this talk about this one remember you the overall under absorption you subtract it right are you following yes yeah, well. remember that you said that under absorption we we add but if it's over absorption we subtract very well so that's uh, that's it for this video thank you very much for watching Please don't forget to like and subscribe.